Hello everyone, I hope you guys are having a wonderful day and making some really good trades and let's get right into the analysis here. So as you guys can probably tell, a very big down day today in the SPY and before the SPY was actually not in my buy area but today in one candle it has officially entered it. Now could it invalidate it? Yes it could but right now this should be our point of a reversal. We should see buyers step in although right now sentiment is not too good in the market all time low you know like everything is going bad there's high sorry there's high interest rates you know yields are rising uh the dxy is rising as well you have gold and silver rising because of geopolitical tensions in the middle east and on top of that earnings were disappointing i think with jp morgan so that was a big kick in the nuts to start off the or like last week on friday so Got to set the tone for the for the banks moving forward. Although Goldman Sachs wasn't that bad today, um, but looking at the spy, you know, big 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 drop today, and on volume too, over I think a 91 million shares traded. So lots of selling here, and it's not too surprising. You know, we've been seeing big money taking profits along the way for this entire period of time, and now we're starting to retrace. Now we have we've only dropped about 3.75%. When we take a look at the Dow Jones, Dow Jones is also in my buy area. I actually have uh, mapped it out here for you guys. So the Dow Jones is actually the, my favorite out of them all right now because it's already down so much into the buy area and we're already uh, getting pretty close to the point of invalidation. So if we drop anywhere below here and we continue downwards, now the bull case becomes very, very bleak. It comes, it be, it, the, the trend starts to shift very very quickly and it becomes very bearish very quickly the bears would be in control and it could start to push you down all the way back down to the 448 areas to the 440s right we could literally revisit these lows once again and it can get ugly in a hurry but just looking at the rsi right now uh, it is resetting pretty heavily uh, on this drop here it's dropped a tremendous amount i mean just look at how much we've rallied Right. And then this little drop here gives you this this much of an RSI reset. So th th that kind of tells me that there might be a little bit more downside. Like when we take a look at the daily, there might be some more downside in the spy uh, in the four hour as well. Uh, when you take a look at the triple Qs, similar situation. We just entered my buy area here, too. Uh, we could we go a little bit deeper. Yes, we could. We definitely could. Uh, you know, there's a lot of <laughs> some of these stocks, the Mag 7, I think are getting absolutely beat up. Tesla's down 5.5% and down in the after hours as well. When we take a look at Meta, Meta's down 2.28%, breaking this channel that we got going on over here. Apple, uh, actually the most bullish out of all of them, I would say, because it actually rallied a tremendous amount. Now it's giving back some of the gains here. In my opinion, this is just a wave two, and we should come out of this area, but this is a long-term uh, buy area here so we may not reverse right away but we'll, we'll see how it plays out right now the markets no nobody is thinking of longing it's like get out of the markets you know that everything is going bad there's nothing that's going good and there's a lot of emotions in the market right now uh this these usually are the periods where you a lot of opportunities come up and you should start to accumulate some positions now if you want to know a sector that i think is extremely bullish it's gold and silver right the gold and silver miners when you take a look at the gdx Look how low the GDX is still. Oh, that's not the GDX. GDX is still relatively low. When you look at the historical chart on the weekly time frame, it's still very low compared to where its all-time high was. And I think these miners, right, a lot of these miners are going to be making new all-time highs. And I know we're nowhere near the all-time highs. You'll take a look at AG. Look how low uh, First Majestic is relative to its all-time high at $24. We're trading at $7.49 a share. When you take a look at Newmont Mining, probably the worst one out of them all. You know, this one, actually, well, in my, in my opinion, it's one of my favorites. But according to a lot of Goldman Sachs analysts, it's the worst one out of them all. And it's down $38.44 a share when its all-time high was 86 right? You got long ways to go, in my opinion. I think when gold and silver remain at these levels and oil starts to come down, if it does come down, I think it will start to come down uh, because... Uh, because of probably these, these recession talks and stuff now. Uh, but if it does start to come down, that's going to be benefiting these miners tremendously because the biggest cost of mining is, is fuel, right? So that comes down, that'll be the perfect storm.
for uh, for Newmont Mining and uh, a lot of these gold mining companies. Okay, all right. Um, let me get over here. We'll get back on the spy. Um, but yeah, you guys know which sector I'm bullish on. But I'll, I'll get back on the spy and I'll kind of explain uh, what's going on here. So if we do end up failing, we could go lower. But in my opinion, I'm I'm playing on the playing this on the long side. We are in a week where the, the market is a, is kind of at a make or break point. If this week we don't start to reverse out of here uh, and continue upwards, then this trend is coming to an end. And we are seeing the late stages of a market top as well with precious metals performing very well. So it might be time to get out of your some, some long positions and rebalance your portfolio uh, towards some cash heavy positions because we may see a downturn in the market. And it is already starting, you know, we're down three and a half percent. When we take a look at the four hour time frame, the SPY is crossing into the red money flow. Very, very bad news now for the SPY. SPY is crossing into the red money flow here. Uh, and then you take a look at the daily. Daily is still okay, but the momentum waves are extending towards the downside here. Not a good look for the, the SPY at the moment. IWM, uh, you got, you still got green money flow, surprisingly. And uh, it's down just a little bit in the after hours. Four hour time frame. Crossing into red money flow, triple Q's, very similar situation. You are crossing into that red money flow. You might be get, you, get, you might have to get ready for some more downside. Uh, Spy, let's take a look here. Spy getting a lot of selling. Let's see if there's anything new on these weekly candles. Nothing new, but you got a week, a bunch of weekly red crosses here at the top. So that kind of showed us that we we were nearing a top in the market. So now we're starting to cross on the MACD on the weekly time frame. Not, not too good. Not looking too good right now. Let me take a look here at a few other things. Uh, on, I want to cover the Dow Jones here. Because the Dow Jones, I think, is about to get a reversal. Uh, okay, the momentum waves have not signaled any bottom just yet. Uh, we are up in the after hours, but we really need to see the Dow Jones hold its own. Let's take a look to see if there's any buying here. Look at that tremendous amount of, of selling from Smart Money. Uh, you got a green cross here one hour time frame. I think you're starting to get some buying on the futures or Oenda here. Let me just double check Futures Oenda four hour Nope, nothing yet. Okay. Well on the futures you're getting a little a little something but other than that There's not that much buying right now So this the, we may we may get a bounce But it might be short-lived and we may start to roll over towards the downside, but well, we'll have to see how everything plays out. We're in my buy zones for my Elliott wave, so I'm playing it. I'm pl I'm taking these chances here, and if I if I get it wrong, then I'll get stopped out, and you move on to the, towards the next trade. Um, just looking at the the RSI, it looks like we're pretty we're getting pretty darn close to to an end. All right, um, let me continue, and I'll take a look at some individual names. So Roku, we've been following for a long time. Roku had some bad news today with, uh, I think, like 200,000 accounts hacked. Oh, wow. Half a million, 576,000 uh, accounts hacked or data leak involving Roku. So the shares were down about 1.6%. Not bad considering everything else was melting down today. Not that bad. Not too bad. So Roku is a trade that I do like at, uh, at these levels here. Uh, the the risk-reward ratio is very good. Uh, I mean, if you enter now... My stop out would be just underneath this red box. And if we go below that, then I would look for a better opportunity. But right now, this one's not too bad. Uh, let's take a look at Apple here. Get on towards Apple. So Apple, I think we're going to be pulling back here in a wave two. Uh, once this wave two is in, I think we're going to get some more upside in Apple. And I know Q1 sales were the worst in history, I think, or since COVID. Uh, they're, 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 they're down like 10 or 20% or something like that. But uh, I'm still very bullish on Apple. It's in my buy area. Uh, let's take a look here at NVIDIA. NVIDIA, very popular name. NVIDIA looks like it's coming back down here. Could this be a double correction? Maybe. We'll see. We'll see if this if this really wants to go deeper for a this the buy area that's all the way down here. All right. We can go lower. Trust me. We can go lower. It doesn't We don't have to bounce and stop right away. We bounced off my level. But if we start to go deeper into this red area, then it would still be a, a buying opportunity. We, we can long this name. This is a very strong name, very bullish name. Everyone wants to be long this name now. Uh, and uh, you might you might want to buy the dip, but we'll see. We'll see how it goes. 
Um, let me take a look. Let's take so let's see what Mara's doing. Mara, 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 crypto miners, crypto mining companies were getting pummeled this weekend. So not too surprised that they're down 5% here. I think there's going to be a good opportunity uh, once we get down to these levels or into the lower lower range here. Uh, probably between 12, 15. We'll, I'll see. I'll see. I'll let you guys know when I enter a position. Hut mining as well, getting hammered down, getting very close to my buy area. Uh, right around seven dollars to six dollars and fifty cents i will be opening a position here so now I'll, I'll keep you guys up to date on what bitcoin's doing as well uh, but bitcoin might be headed down for a, another dip towards fifty nine thousand. but uh, I'll, I'll keep you guys up to date all right let's continue here let's take a look at another one another big big name that we always cover as well uh let me see here tesla take a look at tesla tesla hammered down today Tesla absolutely beat up. Looks like it's going for a, well, could this be a more complex correction? It could, or it could just be another one, two, right? It could just be another one, two, and you're getting ready to, to pop off towards the upside. But right now, Tesla's not looking too hot. It's not looking too hot right now. And if, if we open lower, then this invalidates the bullish scenario for the time being. And we just, we're just going to be in this accumulation zone until further notice but you got bullet big bullish divergence you do have big bullish divergence at the moment on tesla i wouldn't be surprised if you went down all the way down to 153 you tag this level or even crash down to 146 right and then reverse out of here that i wouldn't be too surprised um all right let me take a look at the final one i'll cover smci here so some people are short as smci in my discord uh you guys are doing probably good right now I think SMCI has some more downside uh, to probably the 720 to 400, sorry, 487 level. So anywhere here is a buying opportunity. This is where the, the this move should end. But uh, short from these areas, you should be okay. Uh, I mean, shorting now, you're kind of shorting near near the, the lows, but the, the trend could start to continue towards the downside. Let's take a look at the SMH. Take a look at the SMH because we know what the semis are doing. So if the semis are strong, there's nothing wrong. If they're, they're failing, then you better bail. So right now, the semis are starting to fail here. They're losing their 20-day moving average. You have the 50-day 50, the 50 here, the 100-day, and the 200-day all the way down here. But overall, the semis are not, they're not doing too good. They are struggling. They are struggling. And if they can't get a hold of themselves, and if they can't bounce back, then there's going to be a problem in this market. And we could be headed lower. We could be, you know, I can be wrong. You know, I'm, I'm very bullish on this market. You know, I don't want things to crash <laughs> just yet. I think we we have one more rally left in the market where we're going to leave everyone behind. But if, I, if I'm wrong, then I'm wrong. And then we move on and we look for, for, uh, for, some, for some better opportunities. But I am long gold and silver. Very bullish market, very bullish sector. And I like gold. I like the miners. I love them. All right. Um. I think that's it. I'll cover the TLT, then I'll head over to uh, the dollar and the yields. So TLT actually bounced off my level today right at the bottom of the, the box that I had drawn out here. So if you guys zoom in, we got pretty darn close. I actually sent this to a friend today, but we got pretty darn close to invalidating or continuing an extension further of the way three down. But we seem to have found a low now. So if we, this low is in for the wave three, uh, which it should be now we should come up in a way four, uh bounce back and then finish up the uh in, in another fifth wave lower unless this is already done all right let's see just just let's just take a look at the rsi let's just take a look at the rsi and i'll tell you guys do we have divergence here yeah so we have divergence right now so you can already say that this move is done all right, you could already make this uh, make the case that the wave three is here. It's a four, and this is a five, and now this is a larger wave three, and now you're gonna bounce back in a wave four. So you should get some, you should get a retrace. Now you should you should start to bounce back. Whoops, didn't mean to do that. I'm just trying to I'm just trying to delete this this little white circle that I drew. Okay, uh, now you now you should start to bounce back in a wave four, and then you'll make one final low in a fifth wave. Once this is done, now you can see that the wave two is in. You can see that this is in and you, you're getting rally, ready to rally up like crazy. This means the yields are not going higher. 
this move should come to an end, right? And then it, that'll be all she wrote. We just calculate here. We're doing this ABC like this. Now that we have to adjust the, the box because we invalidated some some things here. So now now we're now the yields are entering the cell area. We had a cell area here before for another pattern, and it did sell off from there. But now that the pattern's enlarging, and we're we're getting for a we're getting a bigger better picture out of it. Now this is the the cell area. It would probably it's between 4.752 all the way to five percent. So. Any more than that, then you know you you got a serious problem. This is becoming an impulsive one, or an overshooting B wave, which can go on for a while. All right, uh, <coughs> excuse me. Let me continue on to the DXY. DXY continues to push higher in this wave three. So this is your wave three of the dollar. You don't want to get in the way of this thing. And if this if if my calculations are correct, we got much higher to go much much higher to go the dollar can go all the way to 106.69 to 108 before seeing any kind of selling this is putting a lot of pressure on these markets a lot of pressure these markets may not hold up under underneath this kind of pressure in the dollar so if the dollar keeps surge continues to surge like this these, these these equities these equities will not survive they will not hold up uh, VIX is spiking tremendously, right? We're starting to see the VIX really start to get to the 19, 20 range. So anything over 20, we're in real danger. So there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of danger in this market right now. Trust me, there is. I'm not saying that we should go all in, but I I am going shopping, right? In terms of buying stocks here uh, and getting some positions open because I do believe that there's going to be a bounce around the corner, and for some reason we're going to get some good news because that's. Just this, just how the charts work, right? We get like on, on just just for an example, like we got Nvidia, right? Well, this is not the chart. We had Nvidia here, right? And they hit my buy area, and for some reason, some good news came out, and then it started to pop off. Now it's starting to roll over, which means that we may be going for a deeper correction. But if it wants to continue higher from here and you just just start to rally, then you know that that was the low. But uh, we'll, we'll see. I, I really like the way this this type of this sort of uh, <clears throat> this strategy works. So if you guys want to learn it, you can join the Discord. The link's in the description. And that's it. So hopefully the markets recover. If they don't, then uh, get ready for, for a lot of pain. There's going to be a lot of pain around the corner. But stochastics are showing that we're almost done here. Anyways, have a wonderful night, guys. And I'll catch you guys on the next one.